In September 2022, the Lake Washington School District formed a committee comprised of over 20 parents and staff from across the district to again take up the issue of school start times. This is the third such committee in our district. However, the charge of this committee was slightly different than in the past. This committee was not established to determine whether or not Lake Washington should change start times. Rather, this committee was tasked with developing a recommendation by January 2023 to change start times. The research around this topic is clear. Adolescents, particularly high school age students, benefit from later start times. The American Academy of Pediatrics, CDC, American Medical Association, and others specifically call out school start times as a primary driver of problems associated with adolescent sleep deprivation. The committee's specific task was to develop a recommendation for how Lake Washington can move all high school start times to no earlier than 8 a.m. and to move preschool start times earlier in the day. Unlike previous iterations of this work, this committee was not tasked with studying and developing a rationale for a change. The committee began work in late September to understand the variables that contribute to school start times and are impacted by changes. The group has met six Thursday evenings and three-hour meetings to arrive at the options presented in this video. The committee also examined data generated by prior instances of this work to further understand potential impacts on students, families, and staff, with the goal to develop a final set of recommendations delivered to the superintendent in January 2023. This timeline is important because if the district is going to implement any changes for the 23-24 school year, families need time to plan and so does the district. The committee gathered new data through a thought exchange distributed to all families, high school students, and staff throughout the district. Over 3,000 responses were submitted from every region across the district. The data generated was not as specific in defining new impacts as hoped. However, the data did show stronger support for the change than past iterations of this work. Additionally, the built-in translation options for both the communication and the thought exchange appeared to work for many families who use languages other than English in their homes. This working committee was not constrained with a predetermined solution. Members were encouraged to think creatively by generating what-if scenarios. These what-ifs ranged from creative scheduling ideas, incentivizing alternative modes of transportation, wholesale changes in service models, and just general questions about district operations. This was an intentional step to encourage creative thinking as district staff and transportation consultants investigated and reported back on ideas generated by the committee. Many of these ideas led to fruitful conversations and deepening understanding of the variables and overall complexity of this task. The committee worked diligently to deepen understanding of the variables and constraints under which the district operates, not the least of which are state regulations and funding mechanisms for schools and school transportation systems. Changing any single variable to change start times at one level has both intended and unintended consequences on every other level, so a change for high school will also impact elementary and middle schools. As part of this deepening understanding, the committee established guiding principles used to vet ideas and discuss options. An outside transportation consultant used questions from the committee to model different scenarios using district data. The guidelines were options needed to be fiscally and operationally feasible for the district to implement, options needed to be driven by what is best for students and aligned as much as possible to the research, and the committee wanted to consider equity, especially in not creating additional system inequities, with the proposals being considered. The scale of changing start times from a transportation standpoint was daunting. School districts are funded, including Lake Washington, for only part of the cost of transporting students to and from school. There are regulations around who and how districts must transport, as well as around the funding mechanisms that generate the revenue to provide transportation. Currently, the district spends close to $14.6 million annually in transportation operational costs, inclusive of labor, fuel, and maintenance 
maintenance and other operating costs. The district only receives funding though for 83% of that, and the rest must come out of local levy dollars. This reality drove the conversation around fiscal feasibility. Operational feasibility really was driven by what the district can reasonably maintain, particularly around labor and operations. It is no secret school districts, including Lake Washington, are struggling to find, train, hire, and retain bus drivers. Most school districts run relatively lean and efficient student transportation systems. Districts utilize tiered systems so buses can be used for multiple runs for different level schools. The maximum number of buses and drivers needed to run the system is then generated from the maximum number of buses that must be running routes at any given time. In a single tiered system, Lake Washington would need a bus and driver for each run and a total of 248 buses. In a multi-tiered system, like used in Lake Washington, that same driver and bus cover three or more runs in the morning and then turn around and do the same in the afternoon. This tiered transportation system creates efficiency and allows districts to maximize use of resources. Lake Washington uses a four and a half tiered system to maximize efficiency of bus runs. The elementary tier is the largest and it is consequently split into an A and B group. Elementary runs are also the shortest at between 15 and 20 minutes while high schools with a larger geographic feeder region are longest with upwards of 45 minute runs. School districts are required to transport only students who are receiving special education services and who need transportation due to homelessness. The vast majority of school districts choose to transport more than that. The district currently sets the walk zones at a one mile radius from the school so students outside that walk zone or who have documented hazardous conditions such as no safe walk routes qualify for busing. The state funds transportation costs for districts according to this geographic model, but individual school boards can choose to set that radius for walk zones up to two miles. The committee did look at changes to service models, particularly at middle and high schools, to expand the walk zone to two miles as a way to create additional capacity. However, that change did not create sufficient capacity to substantively change the number of buses needed for either high school or middle school tiers. The net potential gain was 10 total. As part of this conversation, the committee explored the impact of reduction in service on attendance. The district has had to recently cancel routes due to driver shortages. There does appear, at least in the short term, to be negative impacts on attendance as a result of service reductions. This was information the committee considered carefully in examining the guiding principle of what is best for students. While it is arguably a large leap from a single day's route cancellation to daily attendance would be impacted by service reductions, the data does appear to show a relative hardship on families who depend on district-provided transportation. The committee did not want to create additional inequities with their recommendations, and ultimately the options generated do not propose a reduction in service. It became increasingly evident that student transportation is a primary driver for school start times as other variables were explored. Those variables included the length of the student day, which can vary from level to level and district to district. The state requires a minimum of 1,027 instructional hours, average, for grades 1 through 12. Lake Washington is currently at a 1,040 hour average. Having more than the minimum requirement is important, so for example, a late start snow day does not put the district at risk of not meeting the minimum requirement. Another variable utilized in other districts to make changes to school start times is the use of public transportation, especially for high school students. The result is more flexibility on when high schools can start because that whole tier is then removed from the transportation system for the local school district. In Lake Washington, we have for several years now utilized metro routes for students at Lake Washington High School. There were three pre-existing metro routes that provided service to LWHS, and the district pays for two additional routes. That annual cost has continued to escalate. The committee explored expanding the use of metro to service other schools, including meeting with representatives and planners from metro. The reality is there is currently insufficient route coverage at the other schools for Metro to be a viable alternative. There is a single route that passes East Lake High School and a single route that passes Redmond High School. 
Juanita had two potential routes. Best case, there would be multiple bus transfers to ultimately meet up with the correct route that passes a given school. Ultimately, as routing currently exists, students would likely not see a net gain in start times if they were even able to utilize transit options. Further discussions included impacts on families and staff, including commute times and traffic realities in our communities, changes in child care needs, questions about what is too early or late to start a school. There were many discussions about potential impacts of changes on before and after school activities and athletics, particularly for middle and high school students where roughly 70 and 50 percent of our students respectively participate in those opportunities. Changing school start times is an incredibly complex problem. Ultimately, the committee narrowed from all of the potential scenarios to two options that are now being put forth to better understand the impacts of both on stakeholders. The committee would like to better understand the impact to inform planning and decision making moving forward. The schedules above have the current schedule in the middle for comparison's sake. Option 1 moves high school start times to 8.30 with a dismissal at 3.20. STEM would follow the high school schedule. ICS would follow the middle school start time but dismiss 25 minutes later to align with the length of the high school day for ICS high school students. Middle schools would move to a 7.50 a.m. start time and a 2.20 p.m. dismissal. Elementary schools continue to be grouped into two groups, with Group A starting at 8.40 a.m. and Group B starting at 9.20 a.m., with dismissal at 3.10 and 3.50 p.m., respectively. A.M. preschool programs would start at the same time as the host elementary school. Preschool start times would move to 8.40 a.m. and 12.10 p.m., with dismissal at 11.10 a.m., 12.10 p.m., 2.40 p.m., and 3.40 p.m., depending on the program. The length of the school day is not changed for any level. Option 2 would move high schools to start at 8.50 a.m. with dismissal at 3.40 p.m. STEM and ICS would dismiss five minutes later at 3.45 p.m. Middle schools would move to an 8.25 a.m. start time and a 2.55 p.m. dismissal. Elementary schools continue to be grouped into two groups with Group A starting at 7.40 a.m. and Group B starting at 8.05 a.m. with dismissal at 2.10 p.m. and 2.25 p.m. respectively. Preschool start times would align to the elementary school host location. Start times for a.m. sessions in Group A schools would be 7.40 a.m. Dismissal from a.m. in Group A schools would be 10.10 or 11.10 a.m. Group A preschool afternoon sessions would start at 11.10 a.m. with dismissal at 1.40 or 2.40. For preschool programs located in Group B schools, morning session would start at 8.05 a.m. with dismissal either at 10.35 or 11.35. Afternoon sessions located in Group B schools would start at 11.35 a.m. and dismiss at either 2.05 p.m. or 3.05 p.m. depending on program. The length of the school day is not changed for any level.